All right, so we have this picture and you want to preview the picture and preview the text to know what you're reading about. All right, it's called the scholarship. Let's go through it, see if we have any more pictures. All right, here's another picture. And you want to look at the questions. All right, so it says the teacher said the student who won the scholarship would, so a student won the scholarship. Um, it looks like Dewan's father thinks the scholarship should go to someone else. Something about her grandmother when she, when she learned that Dewan had won the scholarship and she acted a certain way. And we figure out what Dewan's mother decided to do at the end of the story. And we want to think about where it might be set at. Um, here's a, you took your own brother's chance away from him. Just previewing what this might be about. What is the mood of the scholarship? Let me look at some of the other questions. A classmate snickered loudly at Dewan and there was a giggling in the classroom. So I'm wondering what there was, you know, what was happening with the snickering. An old woman started off a bent figure hobbling step by step along the narrow dirt path. So preview with that. Um, Dewan sprinted the short distance to catch up with her grandmother. I do what I think is right, the grandmother said with conviction. And then we have the last few questions. When Dewan heard she had won the scholarship, how did she feel? Kwai's actions after his sister won the scholarship showed that he was thinking about how her brother acted. Um, think about how her family was. It was poor, wealthy, or extremely well-educated and somebody who had a lot of change throughout the story. All right, so good readers preview that and make predictions about what the passage should be about. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and read it. The Scholarship by Min Fo Hong. Now listen, the teacher said in a deep voice, deep solemn voice, we don't have much time left, and I have an important announcement to make. You all know that I received the results of the government examination early this morning. The best student among you will get free schooling away in the big city school. An excited murmur swelled up from the class. The scholarship. He was talking about the scholarship at last. Dewan stole a quick glance at her brother, but he was staring at the teacher, his whole body filled with suspense. Getting the scholarship isn't just winning a prize, the teacher continued sternly. It also means the student will be bearing heavy responsibilities. What kind of attitude should that person, should that student have towards continuing school? Kwai raised his hand hesitantly. He should learn what is useful to his people and come back to help the village after he has finished learning. But how will the student know what will be useful and what will not, the teacher challenged. First, the student must learn how to think, to grasp what is wrong with the society, to understand the rules which create these injustices, and he stopped suddenly and demanded, and what? And change it for fair rules, Dewan whispered softly. The teacher caught her soft answer, yes, and change it for a fairer system, he repeated in a low, solemn voice. Then, peering down at her, he asked, well, Dewan, do you think you could do all that? Me? Dewan asked faintly. Behind her, a classmate snickered loudly, and there was a general round of giggling in the small classroom. Well, child, the teacher continued. His tone was stern, but still kind. Dewan looked up at him in confusion. Why was he deliberately picking on her like this? She glanced around her quickly and felt as if she was swimming in a sea of wide, teasing eyes. Please, sir, never mind me, Dewan said. Just tell us who won the scholarship. There was a long pause. Distant sounds of a dog barking, a villager singing in the rice fields, of the rustling of palms floating floated in the open windows. Streaks of sunlight darted between the desk and the chair legs, forming patterns of light and shadow. But child, the teacher finally said, his voice sounding far away, you did. After the last bell rang, Dewan was surrounded by a crowd of curious and chattering classmates. They fired so many questions at her that Dewan, shy and reserved as she was, felt panicky. Gripping the edge of her wooden desk, she looked around desperately for Kwai. But her brother was not among the crowd. She searched the whole room with quick, frightened eyes until she saw him. He was standing alone in the doorway, clutching his pile of school books and his loneliness, silently watching her in the midst of her admirers. She called out to him, but he only turned and stalked, away, stalked out abruptly. With a knotted feeling in her stomach, Dewan forced her way through the crowd after her brother. But in the schoolyard, she was again surrounded this time by the monks that lived in the small temple around the corner. As she elbowed her way through them as politely as she could, someone called cheerfully after her. Don't forget to tell your whole family the good news. That cheerful voice seemed to ring in her ears now as her bare feet trailed along the path toward home. Kwai already knows the good news, she thought to herself uneasily, and he hates me for it. As she approached the house, she heard the familiar sounds of her mother singing to the baby 
and of the chickens clucking as they pe pecked the dirt underneath the stilts of the house. Her grandmother was sitting on a tree stump, tired and dignified looking, sprinkling feed for the chickens and watching Dewan's father repair the chicken coop. Has Kwai come home yet, Grandmama? Dewan asked, carefully putting her school books on a low workbench. The old woman was about to answer when Dewan's mother walked out onto the veranda above them. She called down to her daughter. That brother of yours, I don't know what he's up to now. He was here just a few minutes ago, but rushed away again. And he promised me he'd cut me some bamboo shoots for the dinner tonight, too. Dewan, will you help me to? But Dewan was not listening it anymore. She gazed toward the fields and then dropped her eyes with a soft sigh. Child, is there anything wrong? Her old grandmother asked sharply. She had a way of sensing things, this old woman, and when she spoke like that, people usually listened and waited. Dewan pulled at her earlobes, scratching her knee, shifted her weight from one foot to the other, refusing all the while to look at anybody. Her father became a patient first and grunted, well, Dewan, what is it? Dewan glanced over at him and suddenly noticed that the big pile of rice sacks was gone. So the landlord's man had taken everything away already. Her heart sank. Her father would be in an even worse mood than usual, making her news that much harder to break. She tried to speak, but the fear in her heart held back her words. There were only the sounds of the lazy afternoon breeze and of the chickens clucking thoughtfully to themselves. Dewan's eyes flickered over her mother, at her stern father, and her quiet grandmother, but they finally focused on a shiny puddle by the big brown rain barrel. Staring at the puddle, she finally spoke. You know that prize that the government gives out after the big examination? Even without looking up, she could sense her father grow tense. This meant so much to him, too. Well, the best student, she glanced quickly at her father's unsmelling face and stumbled on, or at least the one who happens to get the best marks, well, wins the prize and gets to go to the city and continue to, I know all that, Dewan's father snapped. What about it? In the pause that followed, a tiny green frog hopped out of the puddle onto the dust, its bright eyes blinking at Dewan. The little frog looked so determined and eager that Dewan found the strength in it, and continued haltingly. I won the prize. I can go to the city and study more now. She stole another glance at her father. Can't I? The frog hopped away from the puddle and then stood very still, blinking at the vast world about him. Dewan addressed the puddle again. Please, can I? And Kwai? What about Kwai? He won nothing? His father's voice was rough and tinged with a hard wonder. Dewan sensed the pain in her father, and he dared not and did not dare to look directly in his eyes. There is only one prize, she whispered. Dewan looked timidly at her father, and this time their eyes met. There was a long pause, and then he said angrily, You took your own brother's chance away from him? He flung down the hammer he had been holding, and he stalked away to the rice fields. The grandmother, mother and daughter, all watched him stride away. Dewan kept quiet, for she was afraid of angering her elders. For a while, no one stirred. Then the grandmother slowly straightened up from the tree stump and walked with slow, careful steps over to Dewan. Child, she said, touching her grandmother, granddaughter's hand lightly, I'm proud of you. You should not encourage her, Dewan's mother called from the veranda. You know her father won't let her go. She'll be even more disappointed if you praise her now. At least spare her that. Dewan felt her heart sinking. How was it her mother could be so loving and full of laughter one moment, and so biting and sour the next, and sometimes, like now, even both at once? The grandmother looked directly at her own daughter. In a voice quiet with conviction, she stated, I do what I think is right. They continued to glare at each other. Suddenly the baby whimpered and the mother had to shift her attention to it. The grandmother gave a short grunt of satisfaction and walked slowly back to the shade beneath the house. Dewan picked up her school books. Her grandmother suddenly called her over. Child, never mind those books for now. We're going to Noy's house, she ordered. Wait, what are you trying to do? Dewan's mother asked sharply. Why do you want to take Dewan to Noy's house? The old woman answered calmly. Noy and her husband have both lived in the city before. They know its ways better than any of us and can tell us what it is like for a young girl to go to school there. Besides, she added innocently, they like Dewan a lot. I see what you're up to, Dewan's mother shouted to the grandmother. You're going to try to talk Noy into arguing for Dewan in front of her father, aren't you? You think that Noy will trot on over and just like that, convince my husband to let Dewan go off to the city school? There's no hope in that. He'll never think it right for Kwai's sister to go in his place. Mother, would you let me go? Dewan asked. Her mother did not answer. Dewan repeated her question. You would let me go, wouldn't you? Still, there was only a stubborn silence. Finally, her mother sighed heavily and muttered, It is not my place to say anything. She turned her gaze away, avoiding Dewan's eyes. That, replied the grandmother, is what you happen to, th happen to think. 
And that is why Dewan and I will have to walk three kilometers to Noy's home to ask her to speak in your place. She beckoned to Dewan and said crisply, come child, let's go. Dewan looked helplessly at the notebook still in her hands. Then she walked over to her mother and standing on tiptoe, stretched her arm upward to hand the books to her mother on the veranda. Her mother automatically reached down for them. Mother, I'm going now, Dewan said, her voice small but determined. To her surprise, there was no scolding or protest, so Dewan turned and joined her grandmother. The old woman had already started off on her own, a bent figure hobbling step by step along the narrow dirt path toward Noy's house. Dewan sprinted the short distance to catch up with her grandmother. They had ta- taken less than 20 steps when they heard someone calling. Turning around, they saw Dewan's mother running after them in short, quick steps. Wait, she called. They paused until Dewan's mother caught up with them. Standing close together in a little triangle, the three of them looked warily at each other. The grandmother finally broke the silence. Three kilometers is a long way, she murmured. Especially under this hot sun, Dewan's mother asked quickly, added quickly. And I'm getting old, said the grandmother. Then Dewan's mother said, I will walk the three kilometers with Dewan for you. It's kind of you to do that, said grandmother, for the way is long and hot. Then turning away, she began to walk slowly toward home.